Welcome back. And in today's lesson, we're going to learn to find the distance between any two points on a coordinate grid, which will help us find the area of polygons. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to plot these coordinate players and I actually plotted them already because there's something else I want to actually show you with this example. I think we had so much great practice yesterday in our last lesson on how to plot uh, points on a coordinate grid and we're very clear that to plot correctly we're going to run and then rise. So go, we're going to run along X and then rise on the Y. So here's our X, here's our Y. So I have our points here. Point A is 4, negative 4, 4, and this is in quadrant 2, so I'm actually going to label my quadrants as well, just to get us in the practice of seeing them in 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I'm going to look at point B is negative 4, 4, so to the left and down. Um, point C is 6, 4, so to the right and up. And D is 6, negative 4 or to the right and then down. So here are my, my four points. And you can see that if you connected all points together, they would make a rectangle. Um, usually we like to start with point A for naming it. So I can name this A, B, D, C, or rectangle A, C, D, B. I can't call it A, B, C, D because that's not a rectangle. So let me just name that here for you. Uh, rectangle A, B, D, C, or rectangle A, C, D, B. And what I really want to show you on this example is how do we find the actual distance between two points? And we're going to talk about two points that are either on a horizontal or a vertical line. So for example, horizontal, what if I wanted from A to C? Like what if I want to know that distance from there to there? Um, or if I wanted from B, A to B, what if I wanted that distance? That is a vertical line. We're not looking for B to C. That is what something you're going to learn about later. This is something that in seventh grade you absolutely can learn about this. However, that is not exactly seventh grade math. It has to do with triangles and it is definitely something we're going to explore in eighth grade math marvel so don't worry it will come but that's not our focus right now we're going to think about the distance between these points so if it is on a horizontal line versus or on a vertical line but not a diagonal and in aa we have negative four four and in c we have six four both of these are lined up when y equals four. So what I really know is what is the distance from here, from negative four to six? That is what we're gonna learn how to do today. I'll show you two ways to do it, starting off by looking at number lines, and then we're gonna actually write it down as an expression, which is the more efficient way to do it. So let's start off with the distance. I'm gonna write it here on the side. The distance from negative four you can think about it is thinking of this as a number line if i was just figuring out the distance i'm going to break it into smaller pieces decompose it if this is where we know our zero is instead of doing one big jump and you could or doing a whole bunch of little jumps where kids make tons of mistakes because they never end up on those lines they start to get careless i'm going to do two jumps it just makes more sense to jump to this this point somewhere um, somewhere in between the two. So from negative 4 to 0, negative 4 to 0, I know that's the distance of 4. From 0 to 6, I know that, that is a distance of 6. So let's draw those out. So here's a distance of 4 from negative 4 to 0 and from 0 to 6. And I can add those two together to find out the total distance has to be 10. So that is one way you can do this in two jumps. If you have it going from a negative to a positive number, you can meet at zero. What is the distance from zero for both numbers? Uh, and then you can actually add those two up together. So that is one way and we can see the total distance is going to be 10. We know the total distance is just going to be 10. That's very visual. Love it. 
works for uh, so many kids and works for me I'll show you one more way that's even quicker you could just add the absolute value of both numbers so if I took the absolute value of negative 4 and added it to the absolute value of 6 so the absolute value of negative 4 is 4 so 4 plus 6 and you're still gonna get 10 so both work one is just a little bit more, it is a little faster. Um, if you have more practice, I think absolute value is just more quick. It's just quicker. But both methods work. So hit pause so you can add this one to your notes. Now we're going to do one more. We're going to do the vertical line. And we go from A to B. Nice little line over here. So we have the first point is negative 4, 4. And this bottom point, it is negative 4, negative 4. So in this case, I'm going on this line. So I want to go from 4 down to negative 4. What is that distance? So let's write that sentence down as well. Distance from 4 to negative 4. I'm just going to write in absolute value. So absolute value of 4 plus the absolute value of negative 4 is equal, I could already see it, 4 plus 4 is 8. Done. That is the distance. So I know that that is what the measure, that distance of those two lines, uh, between those two lines, actually is. So hit pause so we can add this to your notes. And now we know two great ways for finding the distance between two points. We're going to go to the next um, example. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to graph. And this one's a little bit more complex. We're going to graph these four points to make a rectangle. And we're going to write an expression to find the length of the rectangle. That's our goal. And we're going to evaluate it. We're going to find the expression for it. And then we're going to figure out what is the length. Then we're going to write an expression and find the width of the rectangle. And then find the area of that rectangle and the perimeter. So, so many awesome things. So, our first point E is at negative 2, 3. So, to the left, 2, up 3. All right, there's E, um, 9, 3, so to the right 9, up 3, right 9, up 3, there we go. Um, I'm actually going to write it as well, negative 2, 3, negative 2, 12, so to the left 2, down to 12, negative 2, negative 12, and our last point is going to be 9, 12. So to the right 9 and down 12. And so let's also connect these points together. Like that you can see the rectangle now not too bad not too shabby all right and the first thing we want to figure out is the length and I often think of length going this way width is on the sides so we're gonna figure out what is the distance from either this point to this point or this point to this point they're both the same so I'm gonna use the top ones just because there's space for me to write and that means I'm going from negative 2 to 9 Let's write out what that sentence is. What's the first thing, the expression? Distance from negative 2 to 9. So here is my expression. The absolute value, negative 2 plus. Now the absolute value of 9 I know is just positive 9. It's already positive, so I'm going to leave it like that. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 plus 9 is 11. So there we go. There's my expression, and I solved it. So this side over here is 11 units, which means this side down here is also 11 units. So we've satisfied part one. We know the expression and we know the length. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with the width, which is over here, width, width. They're both exactly the same. And so what are we doing? We're going from 3 to negative 12. So we're going to look for the distance from positive 3 
to negative 12. So same thing. 3, the absolute, which we know the absolute value is already 3. I don't have to do anything. And the absolute value of negative 12. So 3 plus 12, every time I see anything in absolute value, I know that's what the number is. So 3 plus 12 is giving us 15. So that is how much these sides are with 15 and 15 units. And there we go. I'm going to write units over here. So we figured out the width. We figured out the length. We're doing fantastic. So now let's do our area. And with area, I'm going to change that to a different color, red. So let's use what we know to do area. Area is equal to length times width. So we know our length is 11 and our width is 15. Not too bad. We get 160. Five. Wait, let's make sure we have square units. And I love this because you could actually, if you ever wanted to, you can count. That would mean there are 165 of those little squares in there. And you're probably thinking, how'd you get that so fast? Um, in my mind, I literally went, well, 10 times 15 is 150. 15 times 1 is just 15. I just added those two parts together. We're going to do the same thing with perimeter. And perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So 2 times 11 plus 2 times 15. And so that is 22 plus 30. All right, so that is the entire distance. We added all the way around. 11 plus 15 plus 11 plus 15. So there you have it. Look at all we've done. We're just combining different skills that we already know. Now you know not only how to plot things correctly, but we know how to find the distance between any two points as long as it's on a vertical or horizontal line. We will get to diagnose later in your math careers. And we can use this information to properly find the area or perimeter of any quadrilateral on a coordinate grid. So hit pause, drop this into your notes, and we will see you in the next video, Math Marvels.